I think you all agree with me that Africa is a beautiful land. Africa has beautiful people, beautiful stories as we've been hearing all evening. But we also have our share of problems, and that's what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about. And that is that, um, in general, when you look at the problems that we have of a, as a continent, the consensus is that the solution lies in making more money for a continent, for, to, to solve the problems. And there's many ways in which you can make money. You can make money, for example, if you're a government official by stealing some money from the treasury and think that you're going to have a good life. What goes around comes around. That doesn't work very well. You can also make money by, for example, if you're a rich country, lending money to poor countries and charging a lot of interest and having this whole aid industry that really, at the end of the day, is questionable. But I want to talk to you about adding value and making money through adding value. And that's what we do at the University of Nairobi Science Park. And the idea is basically to add value to people and teach them how to add value to materials through digital fabrication. So the context of the Fab Lab at the University of Nairobi is a science and a technology park, which is really what we're trying to have our own Silicon Valley here in Nairobi. And how we do it basically is currently through the Fab Lab, which is a fabrication lab. We also call it a fabulous lab because of the kinds of things you'll see in a minute that we're able to make. The idea came out of MIT. And at MIT, there's a program, a course that's taught there called How to Make Almost Anything, which also gives you an idea about the extent of the things that you can do in the Fab Lab. So I finished my doctorate in the US in science-based area. I lived in Japan for, for a while doing research and so on, and decided I, I need to be here. But it was very difficult working here, not having equipment or access to good equipment and so on, until there's a paradigm shift in terms of some certain digital fabrication equipment that's really quite inexpensive and accessible. And so I was able to write a, a, a proposal to the government and get a grant for a Fab Lab. So I want to share with you what some of the tools are in the Fab Lab. So we have an end mill. End mill allows us to make things like electronics. So we're able to make circuits very easily. A rapid prototyping is a buzzword. So you're able to have an idea in the morning, and by midday, you've already made a, solution, a prototype of that solution. So we can make circuits like the one shown in the picture over there. We can also copy, like take a, a carving. Uh, this carving is of a rhino taken from the market. Copy that and make another one out of soapstone, make a mold, and make many of them. We also have a, a, a laser cutter. The laser cutter allows us to cut materials such as uh, acrylic material, we can, we can print on it. We have a shop bot, which is what you're looking at right now. The shop bot allows us to make molds through which we can make large objects, like buildings and so on. So we can go from small objects to larger objects. Now, the essence of it is teaching and learning. So adding value to people first and teaching them how it's a supply side of innovation, if you like. So that's what we're supposed to do as a university. One of the ways in which this is done is through the Fab Academy. So the Fab Academy is whereby the professor at, in the media lab in the US teaches once a week students who are sitting in 30 different centers around the world, and they're all able to ask questions, they're all, all able to show their work and so on. We also have different ways of teaching. We're able, to, for example, to have peer learning, so people within the lab teach other people. We have instructable videos, and it's actually kind of a radical way. It's not the usual way that university education is taught. It's very integrated, for example, so different kinds of engineers, and, and non-engineers are in the same space. And the thing is, a, a way to understand it is you can use a computer, you can use software and not understand the way that the software is written, and you don't need to. You can use a computer and not understand the way it's actually built or how it works, but you don't need to. And then you can send the document that you've created to a printer, have it print, and you don't have to know how the printer works or how that transfer took place. So you can actually use the Fab Lab without understanding how the machines work and still get a lot of stuff done. So our doors are open for anybody. So the young man who did the solution for the lions, we had a chat, he's going to be in the Fab Lab soon. And I want to show a few examples of what we do. This is a printer that we built. It's, a, it's, a, it's called a 3D printer. So this allows from the syringe, it's a very inexpensive syringe, and there's a rack and pinion gear system that's attached to it, and it's driven by a motor, and that motor is controlled by the computer, and so it, it shoots out liquid in a manner that we call drop on demand, a drop of liquid exactly where you want it and when you want it. And we use this to be able to create uh, what the image at the bottom, which is a circuit, and so we dry the material, and it be, it's a conducting material. And so this is a very inexpensive way of making circuitry. It's very cutting edge, and it's something that we believe in the future we're going to be able to exploit to have some industry develop. We have a robotics competition in all of Kenya. About 50 institutions of higher learning participate in this robotics competition, and we had a, 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 an entry in that as well. We also collaborate. We're collaborating in this case to build structures. In this case, it's toilets. In this toilet, we're able to make the precast uh, parts in the lab and we're able to collect the human waste 
and generate biogas, as a lot of people have been talking about today. The lower pictures show that you can also cast uh, the same kinds of parts. It's made out of ferro-cement. So you combine cement with chicken wire, you're able to make units which you can put together to build all kinds of shapes. So we're doing this as a collaboration with MIT students. Some of our uh, startups, we have this box, it's called Pimasema. The government came to us saying that they're going to be opening up county-based centers all around the country. So when you and I need an ID, a driver's license or whatever, we won't have to go to Nairobi. You can go to wherever is close to you, go in there and get the job done. And then when you're finished, the government has to know whether you are happy or not, whether perhaps there was corruption, somebody wanted a bribe. So this instrument allows you to actually key in the answers to those questions. And, uh, and this was actually built by a guy who I saw on television who had built a tea-making machine. And what happened, I think you might have seen this on TV yourselves. So time, Simon's on the way home in the evening on the matato. He sends a, a text, and the machine where he's put the milk into place, the majani or the tea leaves in place, and the water, and it starts to brew the tea. And then when it, when it finishes brewing the tea, it sends him a text and says, chai ko tayari. The tea is ready. I was so amazed when I saw this guy, I, I said to the students, go to the studio and find this guy, bring him into the lab, and we did, and he's the one who made the Pimasema, we've given him government business. We have Tangus Kowech, he's made a trading system, you can trade stocks and shares on your phone. We've got a wireless system, it's been running over Mountain View Estate for the last one and a half years, working off a router that you can buy for like $70, using chicken wire and plywood to project a signal over 10 kilometers, very inexpensively, it's open source, you can go online, get all the information. So these are the things we're doing, and the point that we really want, especially, is to duplicate these labs all around the country, and if, if possible, all around the continent, because there's Simons all over the country, all over the continent, and if they can come close to a place near them where they can actually express their God-given talent, then we can start seeing value add to change this continent of ours. Thank you so much. <laughs>